Hey guys, today is going to be the second part of the DIY $20 spectrometer series. So in the first part, we discussed the main components of the spectrometer, the diffraction grating, and the webcam camera. So if you guys still haven't seen that, definitely go check it out and it'll give you the information on how we got to this point. All right, so it looks like it has a screw attaching the clip on here. So I'm just gonna try to take that out. It's probably going straight into plastic, I'm guessing. Oops. Okay, so there's a bit that kind of gives it that swivel effect. Okay, so we have another screw here holding this housing. So that just comes off. Then that's probably the hole for the microphone. And then, oh, okay, so there's screws in each of these holes as well. comes right apart so we got here so there's the control board and here's the lens so I think it's just sitting in there oh yep comes right out Take this bit off. Uh, and now if we want to remove the lens, we need to, I think, unscrew it from this side. So that image sensor there has many small components that we call pixels, each of them independently responding to light. And this one's uh, 640 by 480. And basically the way our spectrometer is going to work is that we're going to use the diffraction grating to split up white light. And it's just going to separate it onto the image sensor. So the image sensor does not need to know what wavelength it's getting. It could be even a black and white one. What matters is that basically on one side, on the left, let's say, it'll pick up blue and UV, and on the right side, it'll pick up red and IR, green somewhere in between. And so it'll just count the intensity at each of those pixels, and we can reconstruct a spectrum from that. I put back the lens, screwed it back onto the board. Now we have the microphone still left on here. You can leave it if you want to use this for some other applications, but for me it's going to be dedicated to the spectrometer. So I'm just going to clip that off. All right, so basically with these two components, we have everything we need to make a spectrometer. The only thing remaining is some way to isolate all of the stray light that is present so that we can just focus the light into the camera from just the source that we want to analyze. You can make it out of a various number of materials, out of wood, out of a foam board, but I'm going to go ahead and use just some cardboard. I'm actually going to try to use this box that the Meanwhile driver for the LED boards I'm running right now came in. And it is, let's see, it's 
just about two inches, so I'll have to trim the diffraction grating. So two inches high. Said uh, three and a half depths. And around 11 and 3 eighths for length. So the first thing I think I'm going to do is reinforce the bottom here. Uh, you can see it's uh, not an even surface, so I'm going to first of all glue these pieces onto each other permanently. So put some glue down here and along there. And then cut out a piece of cardboard that I'm going to glue in here as an added support for the bottom. Alright, so there's the reinforced bottom. Again, I just glued on a piece of cardboard, cut out to size. So next, what I'm going to do is cut a large slit on one side. You can probably actually just cut the final slit in the cardboard if you're very careful. But it's better to use something with a very straight edge, like a razor, to make the sides of the slit, and that way you can adjust it, perhaps. So what I'm going to do is cut a pretty large one, and then I'm going to have kind of a mounting bracket that I'm going to make out of cardboard that's going to go on top of that, and then the actual slit is going to slide into that, hopefully. So I think I'm going to use this side for the slit because it, this side has the seam. But I think I'm going to reinforce the whole thing with maybe some Gorilla Tape. To make the slit holder over here, what I did is cut out two pieces of cardboard that match the size of this face here. And then in one of them, I cut it out so that it was a thickness of 3 eighths of an inch. And in another one, I cut out, let's see how much is it? About half an inch slit, leaving three eighths of an inch at the bottom. So the way this is going to work is that I'm going to glue them like that, and then like that. So that space, oops, that space is be, will be where the slit resides. All right, so there are those two layers glued in, the insert and the outer piece. See that little pocket there. So I went ahead and made a slit as well. So we got this uh, piece of cardboard on the back. There's a hole cut out. And on the front, there's two razor blades taped on. Basically, I taped them flush to the bottom here. And then I used another razor blade to set the separation there. So it's just barely a razor blade's width across. Okay. And then I went ahead and put another strip of tape down here to just reinforce the bottom of the corner here. And um, I made it kind of short, otherwise it would be too difficult to take out of there. And so I added this extra strip at the top to be like a handle. And so the way it goes is it slides in here. And then you can adjust it relative to the opening there. And then if I need to swap it out with a different one, just pull it out and exchange it with some other slit width. I went ahead and widened the window here on the inside so they're pretty much the same dimension for the holder and the actual case and I just reinforced a little bit here with some Gorilla Tape along with the very narrow slit I made here with the razor blades. I made another one just out of tape see that here it's about uh, three millimeters and the only thing that really matters is that it's defined from this side 
You can see how from this back side it's all recessed. So a wider slit like this would be useful for a low, low light level, low intensity source. Whereas uh, one of these could be useful for high intensity directional light. So just different slits for different applications. But this one should be just fine like that. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. In the next part, we're going to go ahead and finish up the enclosure, get it nice and light tight, get the camera and the diffraction grating mounted inside of there, and hopefully finally get to take some spectroscopic measurements. Definitely keep an eye out for part three, and thanks for watching.